Welcome to The Life of Hair. My name's James Atkinson, and in this week's special episode, highly requested from Sunday's episode, is the blow dry to the Rachel haircut. As I said at the weekend, I think this haircut is going to come back in and it's going to make a little bit of a dent in 2020. It's one of those haircuts that we didn't see coming, but it really took off. I don't know, I could be wrong, but I'm seeing loads and loads of girls bringing me very, very Rachel-esque haircuts all the time now. So I'm gonna crack on with this. I've got nothing else I want to say about this. You saw it all on Sunday. If you haven't seen the haircut to this video, then I will link it right at the end so you can click on it if you want to. I just wanted to quickly talk to you about the two products that I used on this um, because lots of you ask me about products and the things I've used when I'm making my videos. So in this particular video, because we are styling only, uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the products I've used. These are electric London products. Um, so this is their Cloudburst Mousse, which is a mousse with avocado oil in it. So it's like a mousse meets a styling lotion. It's a very, very supple touch, not sticky. Doesn't leave a residue in the hair. It's a really, really nice, easy to use product. And this is the hairspray. Now this hairspray is ultra dry, ultra dry hairspray. Doesn't leave any residue on the hair. Again, no white bits. Um, it's got like cotton seed oil in it and that's what replaces um, the need for like loads and loads of alcohol. I was just given these products, this isn't a sponsored video to try, so I don't know all the details, I just know that I really like them and I've been using them for a little while now and um, they're just some things that I think are really interesting about them is that they're actually all sourced from the UK, so there's no kind of big carbon footprint, you know, bringing in ingredients from all around the world. Um, and everything is like locally manufactured here in the UK. So good products available in the US and the UK and um, I think some Asian countries. I'll just show you how much I'm gonna use. Uh, so because it's really, really soft product, you can use a real you know, big piece of mousse. It won't make the hair feel sticky or horrible. One and a half golf balls amount, if you like. I don't know if that's a measurement that you'd understand, but that's how much I'm using. And um, the way I apply it is I'd split it into two and then I apply it one side of the head from the top all the way down. Remember, where you want the volume is where you've, you've got volumizing products. Put it in those areas um, and then distribute it down the hair. I've seen loads of people with like volumizing sprays, like spraying the ends loads and then not really focusing on the root area. And of course that's fine, but you want the volume of a volumizer at the root. And I know a lot of you are going to be like, James, what are you talking about? This is so obvious. But this is just my observations of watching hairdressers over the years. And maybe it's something that, you know, we all need to reevaluate at times. We get a bit complacent and we're just sort of, there we are, spraying away our products and not really thinking about where they're going. And then I'm going to subdivide the back down into two. I've still got some product and I'm just going to put it onto the occipital bone area and just comb it down through that area. Now remember, volume doesn't just start at the crown. Volume is all the way through the hair. So it is important that you evenly distribute the product throughout the entire head. Um, and this will give you better, longer lasting results anyway. So that's the mousse. And that's all I'm going to use in terms of styling the hair. You know, I don't need anything else uh, on the hair. I'm a really, I never want the hair to look forced into a shape. I want it to flow with the cut that I've put on it. Change angle now, and you're gonna see it from my perspective as I blow dry. So the first thing I want to talk about really quickly is getting the hair into a position where we can start blow drying. Hair will not form a shape of any kind until the last 5% of drying. So in effect, when the hair is soaking wet, if you go straight in with your round brush, you are going to achieve nothing. All you're going to do is spend a lot of time evaporating moisture out of the hair, trying to form a shape that isn't going to happen. This puts undue stress on the hair and it can make the hair incredibly damaged because when is the hair at its weakest? When it's wet. So what we're gonna do is take the nozzle off the dryer and I'm going to rough dry this hair to around 80% dry. I'm not gonna worry about partings. I'm not gonna worry about the overall shape just yet. I'm just gonna rough dry. And when I'm rough drying, I'm aiming the airflow in at the roots because moisture will travel down, not up. Okay, that's it, rough dried off. The roots are virtually dry. The ends still have a little bit of moisture in them. 
I'm going to fo focus on blow drying the ends, then the roots. This is something that I do so that I concentrate on polishing the ends and then I concentrate on getting volume in at the roots. Right, when we blow dry, I'm going to put the nozzle back on the hair dryer. Really important for concentrating the airflow and making the airflow slimmer so it makes the hair easier to polish. For this technique, I'm using a small round brush with uh, boar bristle or natural bristles. On it, this is a YS Park 40 G4, for those of you that are interested. I start probably 50 to 60% of my blow dries blow drying the front, and then I work my way to the back. Now, one of the reasons I do this, it gives the client a little bit longer to look at their haircut and assess whether they like it. Because if you think about it, if you start from back to front, and then they've only got a really short time looking at their hair. This doesn't give them very much time at all to decide if they like what they see. So I really want them to leave happy, as I'm sure you guys do too. So I always, at this point, dry what they can see so that they can spend a bit more time with it before they leave. Now with this front section, what I'm focusing on is drying it with a bend in it but I'm also just drying it straight forward. With these kind of shapes, if you dry this section straight forward, you'll get enough movement out of the curve to then swing the hair back round into the direction you want it to go. So you see that nice strong bend? That's gonna be perfect for setting up that front section with that soft sweeping fringe effect. See that? Perfect. Now, moving on to the side sections now. What I'm gonna do, moving on to the side sections, I'm gonna take a clip and I'm gonna run the clip down the head vertically. That's gonna create a little pre-section for me. I'm gonna get them to client to tilt their head slightly to the side and I'm gonna blow dry this hair coming forward. And as you can see, that's created a really strong curve in that front shape there. Same again on the opposite side, vertical section, two inches in depth. Remember, we've rough dried the hair off, so it's pretty much. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing on the opposite side. We're gonna blow dry the hair forward with the client's head tilted to the side slightly. can now see that we've really enhanced the shape around the face that we created from the haircut and that that's really bringing out everything that we did in terms of shape around the face and that's looking really pretty already so now the client can sit there and look at that while you dry the back and it gives them time to absorb what they like what they dislike or you know a little bit more time to spend with their haircut while you have time to make changes for them if they think it looks a bit heavy or whatever, whatever. Right, let's do the back. So from this point back, we're gonna blow dry all the hair back. So we're gonna to go to a more traditional stance from the back here. And because we've spent time rough drying the hair off, we can be a little bit more generous with our section sizes. So again, two inch section there and we just go in straight in working on our ends because we've spent time drying our roots off. Our roots will dry really, really quickly. So we're gonna go in with the round brush, bring it out to the ends, wind it round, heat up the section. Here's a hot tip guys, don't put your heat when you're like blow dry intensive straight on the brush. You'll melt your brush and you won't get the shine you're looking for. Try and aim the airflow just past the brush so it's smoothing the cuticles down then wrap it up at the ends and then wind it back in keeping the airflow on the edge of the brush there we have a nice bevel on that edge there now same again on this side and we're going to work in this exact process all the way through this back sections I've got my hairdryer on low speed and high heat. 
I don't always do this, but I will say that if I want to get the hair extra shiny, I do do this because it allows me a little bit more time to work with the hair rather than it drying out too quickly and me losing control of the texture of the hair. If you want to get really, really shiny results, guys, you can slow right down with the wind speed and keep the heat up high and you will get really, really nice, smooth, shiny results. It does take So I just wanted to quickly talk about the sections that come above the occipital bone. Once I've dried and smoothed the ends, I then take my hair dryer and I blow it back through the root area like this. I relax my brush down and I allow the hair to bend. And I dry the hair in this fixed position. This amplifies the bending at the root. And so when we take our brush away, we've created a kind of back combing effect almost. That really adds to the volume in this area and this will help you with volume no end when you're doing voluminous blow dries. Relax your brush and then go back in. You don't want the hair to be under tension at this point. You want it to be able to bend at the roots. Come back through, smooth your ends a bit more. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this section here, pop it up there, we're going to blow dry that back. We're going to take this section through the side here and we're going to blow dry this section forward also like we did the front previously. So we're going to come back round to the front here, take that section of hair. and do exactly what we did before. Wind, taking it up to the ends. So then we go on the opposite side, we're going to take our section through that parietal ridge area, just there. Pull this section forward. And it doesn't matter if you blow dry some of the hair that you've previously blow dried. I've actually split this top section into two. I'm going to des I've decided to blow a little bit more hair forward and then I'll blow that section back and then we'll be done. I have to stress I'm really overemphasizing the bends around the face, you know, so that it really amplifies the Rachel haircut. Last section on the highest point of the head, and we're going to do exactly what we've done on the previous sections, elevate it up. We're going to focus on the ends, making sure that they're all smoothed out. And then aim the hairdryer back in at the roots, relax the tension on the, on the hair, and just let that air blow through those roots. Make sure your ends are perfectly polished. Drop out that section. And I just like to give my blow dryers a quick blast. Just to give them as natural, just to give it a natural feel. I like it to feel, you know, not too blow dried, not too forced. You know, let it do so this is this extra dry session spray I was talking about. And just lightly push the hair into place and just dust it with hairspray. I love hairspray, especially a, a really, really dry hairspray that doesn't make the hair feel sticky or overproducted. You know, when you get that feeling of like you spray a hairspray on and then it's just stuck there and you can't touch it. I 
hate that. But if I've got a hairspray that I can use and it moldable and I can touch it and I can reposition the hair and I'm all over that. I love hairspray in that, in that way. Just get the hair and give it a little lift. Run my hands through it. Make sure that we've got the volume that we want from this look. Use your fingers to tease out the sides there. And there we have it, the Rachel blow dry. I've done a really amplified version of the one that I did for the video initially. And if you wanna see that video, I'll link it at the end of this one, but I hope that was enjoyable for you. It's a lovely shape to put lots of volume in. I recommend you put loads of volume in it. You can always brush it out afterwards, but you really want to emphasize that beautiful shape that you've created around the front. If you took some tips and tricks from this video, then please, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you again on Sunday for another episode of The Life of Hair.